I want to play you a clip for a second because we're on the topic and I want to get your thoughts on this. This is a bit of a throwback clip and let me know what you think. He was actually, I could see that he was really down. I mean, he was, uh, he, he was trying to keep a pretty brave face, but he was prostrate. I mean, really prostrate at that point, not knowing which limbs were going to work, that's all. And then I just mentioned to him that, uh, that he could conceivably, if he could get his right hand to work again, he could actually play the drums by repeating the sounds on the top and the bottom. And he then, as he lay there, he, he started just doing that thing with his limbs. And I could actually see almost a light shine, you know, in, in his eyes, in terms of that. He thought, yeah, that's actually the one way out of it, you know. And literally from that day on, in my perception, the few times I saw him, he had a cause. And then I actually mentioned it to the band. And I said to, to Peter Manchin, I said, Rick really could play. You know, if, if, if he, if, it's just going to take time. We were going to record the album, so he had a lot of recuperative time. And of course, no, nobody was discounting that, but in the back of everyone's minds, they weren't quite ready to believe it. And I can see you smiling and nodding and hearing that. I mean, No, that's I so cool because I just discovered that interview uh, two days ago. And, and Mutt never gives interviews. No. Um, I know, we've tried. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, so <laughs> the fact that he, uh, he, he was talking about it the way that he was, and I, I, I remember... Uh, the meeting we had, he came to see me in hospital. Mm. And uh, actually, you know, the hospital's idea of vegetarian food was just kind of take the meat off, you know. <laughs> um, he came in and he said, he said, you know, Rick, we need to get you some real food. And he actually got this, uh, this uh, Harry Krishna couple to come up from Watford. And um, they came to the hospital and they started cooking for me. It was fantastic because the entire hospital ward smelled like an Indian restaurant. It was wow. brilliant. Wow! And um, that that was that was a huge step in the right direction toward uh, my recovery. Mm. And uh, Mutt was very instrumental in making that uh, in making that happen. So I'm I'm eternally grateful eternally grateful to uh, Mutt for doing that. And yes. Um, I, I I remember that conversation and 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 I I do remember that aha moment where the light bulb went on and 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 I realized that uh, that yes I can do this so uh, and that's the power of the human spirit. Yeah, it's it's so incredible. I mean, just hearing him talk about it, and I mean, like I can only imagine what was going through in your mind at the time. It's like whether or not whether or not you're even going to live, but it's like I'm sure playing drums that was you know not at the forefront. So <laughs> No, of, of your not, 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 not at all. As I said, you know, I, you know, uh, having been in a coma for a couple of three weeks and during that time, you know, they put my arm back on and then took it off all during that same that same time period yeah. and me not knowing a thing about it. So, you know, when I came around and, and, and started to get an idea of what had actually happened to me, um, uh, uh, I remember at a certain point, I was like, I don't want to do this. I, I yeah. felt way too self-conscious. Um, I, I, I just, uh, I felt completely defeated. And then, you know, I, uh, I guess I woke up in, in, in a way that, 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 uh, that allowed me to see past, uh, you know, the situation I found myself in. Mm. And, and then once I started uh, actually playing drums again, um, I got it. And, and, and I realized that I, I, could, uh, I could actually do this. And uh, Mutt recognized that. Talking about Mutt Lang, I've always been curious about this. I mean, you know, at this point, uh, I've done really in-depth interviews with Phil and Joe talking about recording hysteria and the techniques that were used, you know, with the Synclaviers and the Fairlights and the Rockmans and all this and all that. I've always wanted to know when you guys were recording those records, when Mutt and Mike Shipley were putting together the drum samples and all this and all that, yeah. did you have any say in the tone of your drums on those records? Yeah, because I had to tune them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got very good at. Um, yeah. yeah, so what we would do is we would actually create sounds that were larger than life. Um, yeah. So, you know, uh, for instance, a snare drum 
wouldn't necessarily be a single snare drum sample. It would be several snare drum samples. And depending on what type of song, uh, we would add uh, uh, hand clap sounds and all these different things that created this push and pull sort of motion as the as the song evolved. Um, right. you know, a song like Women or Pour Some Sugar On Me. Um, so, so yes, the, 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 the sounds themselves were quite, were quite complex, um, but they, they, they kind of evolved over the, the, the period of time that we spent, you know, recording the records. And, and, and by the time we got to uh, mixing, you know, we, we had sounds that were just monstrous. Right. Yeah, because I'm a bit of a recording nut and like those records I've listened to top to bottom more than any other. And I remember reading an interview with Mike Shipley where he was talking about how you guys had like, you know, like eight different snare drums in the studio and sampling and trying to get like the right tone and different tunings. And you had like a black beauty in there. But then like the, the actual sound that ended up on the record was like a stack of seven different sounds put together kind of thing. It's yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's, it's, it's true. Um, Mike was very innovative, but, but really taking his cues from uh, Matt Lang. Who, who obviously heard something in his head and sometimes couldn't quite convey it until he heard it. So we would go around the houses so many times, you know, with different sounds uh, uh, until we found something that, 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 you know, it was his sort of aha moment, you know? Yeah. So that's what I mean, though. It's like when you listen to those drums, it's like, did you sit there and like, uh, maybe it's a little too cannonball-y or <laughs> maybe we should dial back the reverb a bit or or you were like, oh, that sounds freaking amazing. We're, we're doing that. I mean, it all sounded great to me, you know, as yeah. we're going through it. But then it became really obvious as as we as we lived with those sounds, uh, what what combinations worked for what type of songs. Right. Yeah, because like you said, you listen to women and, you know, like the like the, the main driving snare in the verse is the big, you know, spread clap sound. And then in the chorus, you know, it's a little bit more contained to fit into the mix. And yeah. yeah, it's interesting how you guys were even able to pull that off. I mean, with the technology and everything, it's it sounds to me, it sounds incredible to this day because that's what everybody's pop records sound like, you know. It's, it's true. But, you know, back in the day, you know, we were using tape and I remember... You know, before you make slave reels, um, some some of the tapes have been a, they've been over or gone over so many times because of overdubs that you could actually see through the tape. <laughs> they just deteriorated so much. Yeah, it was great. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. That's incredible. And then just to talk about you know like the recording of the drums and stuff like that. I mean. It, were you sitting there and Mutt was telling you, like, okay, you need to be a little bit more tighter on the hi-hat? Like, what kind of direction would Mutt give you in the studio performance-wise? Um, again, it, it would depend on the song. Um, uh, sometimes we'd lean heavier on electronics, and then other times it would be, you know, me sitting behind uh, a, a drum kit would say, just the cymbal set up. Um, yeah. You know, Playing, playing along to uh, uh, stuff that I'd either recorded or programmed. So mm -hmm. it, it, it was really dependent on what type of song we were playing. And, um, you know, and, th and that would determine, you know, which direction we went. Yeah. Was there, was there ever any, like, full, like, one-take performances on the record? Or was it, like, a hi-hat section, and then you'd sit behind the cymbal kit and just hit the cymbals, or...? That's that's pretty unheard of, with Mutt especially, you know? <laughs> it, 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 it was like take after take after take after take after take. I mean, literally, you know, sometimes one section would take us, you know, a whole afternoon or a whole day, uh, depending depending on, on how how much importance we put on on that particular uh, on that particular song you know how how hooky we wanted the thing to be mm. yeah but even that i mean if you're sitting behind your hi-hat and then he goes like oh uh you know i think you were a little late on the end of the three we need to do that again like, yes this... that, that happened many times and uh, there were many drumsticks thrown across the studio yes i'm not very <laughs> proud of that but uh you know be. It, it, it happens, you know, I, w I was learning new things about myself. Um, 
and 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 he was obviously pushing the limitations of of uh, of, of my ability. So it, it was kind of a it was kind of a, a learning curve every single day that I went in there. An all new episode of the Jeremy White podcast Tuesday at noon. Available wherever you stream. Catch up on past interviews and episodes on demand now. Subscribe so you don't miss any of it.